lemon diet. Cat Williams. Love it. Oh, Cat Williams. Fantastic. The first thing I said is I go, I hope we're good because last time they made me play from the tips, which is the farthest ones. And he goes, people don't make you do anything. You do what you want in life. I go, oh boy. So it's going to be like this. <laughs> so it was actually, it's like a slow down Chris Rock on 33. Wisdom, so, wisdom alert. Hi, everybody, and welcome to Superfly. <laughs> You're, what I hear from people is, I just want to uh, eavesdrop or f- Superfly on the wall. You guys talking regular. So here That's we are. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> we don't We're have to We're talking regular. Some people don't know. There is Superfly, which is the video component. component. And then we have the regular fly on the wall. But Dana, I'll get right to it. I just Let's got in it. from a... Netflix is a joke has been going on in LA. So there's a lot of comedians in town. Crazy shows. It's crazy. And so it's fucking bananas. It's fucking nuts. And we'll talk about the roast in a second. But the first thing Mm -hmm. I did a golf tournament just for shits and giggles. And I said, team me up with a comedian. Cause I don't know if you've done charity golf things. I do it. I'm not really a great golfer, but Mm. they're like, Oh, for sure. Uh, When I do regular ones, it's for charity. Mm -hmm. And then you get there. And you're teamed up with four contest winners, or, you know, four yeah. charity people that donated. Mm-hmm. And the guy's so like, who's hi, your, I'm who's Bob your Squankmeyer, dough? and uh, I'll be with you for the next five and a half hours. And it's not even a meet and greet. It is in your car with you. So now you make up jokes, or you just go out there and just wing it. So, you know. Bob Squankmeyer has seven Netflix specials. I just looked it up on my Oh, phone, he's a real so. guy? Oh, Bob Squankmeyer. And he's killing it? Oh, Bob, he's great. Crushing. Revolutionary. That's on my regular, just do you want to do a charity golf term, do you, which are all very mm-hmm. good and well, and I've done a lot of them, but sometimes it's hard because then they get wasted. So, uh, right. The 19th hole starts yeah. early. I, why can't, why does it always have to be golf for charity? Why couldn't it be checkers in an air-conditioned bar? It's just a checkers yeah. tournament. Yeah. That's what you would be good at, like Sudoku or something tournament. <laughs> Chess. I get I my like kings this. going. I'll get my kings fucking. I get my kings up. going, man. Get, get my pawns rook. marching forward. Pop. No, that's ke- that's chess. That's too sophisticated. Yeah. But today's was easier because I said there's comedians involved, and they said, "Oh, I go, I don't want to do it." And they go, "It's all comedians, a couple of athletes." So it wasn't really pair you up with four total strangers, which is mm-hmm. fun for a while. But um, it's more like because uh, one's always shit faced. So they go, oh, and I said, oh, how about I could do it with Bill Burr or put me with, I think Andrew Santino was there, uh, Nate Bergazzi. So I said, there's a bunch that golf, so, and they're doing it. So they said, Tina, okay, great. Tina was golfing? Tina Fey? No, she wasn't there. Oh, okay. It was uh, just, uh, well, you knew most of the guys. So I get there and I go, where's my squad? Oh, I also said Rob Lowe. So I see Rob Lowe. Are we together? Oh. No. I go, oh, don't do this to me. So they pair me up, but it still is fun because Drum I, wound roll. Up, I wound up being with Keenan Allen, who's a wide receiver for the Chargers, who I know way yeah. out of my fantasy football team. Great, mm-hmm. grand, wonderful, athlete. good, good athlete. And it's a scramble not to lose you with the lingo, but mm-hmm. it means everybody hits and then you take the best ball. And I'm like, oh, oh so that I, I can drive. And then these football players will drive it farther. And then we take their ball and I look good. But maybe you, know? you should be the de facto putter with your neck. I, I was, I was yeah. chipper putter. And uh, yeah, so you're lethal with a putter in your hands. I'm actually good. There's sometimes I come alive and it was a really nice course. <laughs> so I get there. I'm seeing, I see Nate, I see all the guys. Mm-hmm. And then I go, Oh, I'm here waiting for Keenan Allen. No show. No show. Doesn't come. Oh, so we're in a foursome, but the foursome is, let me tell you, Cat Williams, love it. Oh, Cat Williams, fantastic! And uh, Blake Griffin, and so Cat goes, "Hey man, I could hear your voice all day. I'm listening to your comedy all my life." He was so fucking funny, and he was great. And he's all, and he's, and he's, he's so hysterical. in the news lately with all these things. He is. And he, the first thing I said is, "I go, I hope we're good because last time they made me play from the tips, which is the farthest ones." And he goes. People don't make you do anything. 
you do what you want in life. I go, oh boy. So it's going to be like this. So it was actually, it's like a slow down Chris Rock on 33. Wisdom, so, wisdom alert. Yeah, he gave me some. I go, keep it coming, dude, because this is what I want from if you. If you can't keep your head down, nothing's going to go right today. Yeah. That was so my we, best cat. So we, it was good. Cat is a tough one, too. He's got a very unique voice. Uh, and, and he was a lot of fun. And we did pretty good, actually. But I you know, we were it. talking to our friend Jerry Seinfeld recently about mm -hmm. goats. And uh, every once in a while, someone kind of owns the space of stand-up. Chris Rock has had mm. multiple times doing that late 90s. And we talked mm. about Chappelle and Louis and Sebastian. But there mm -hmm. was a time where I wa I didn't know who Cat Williams was. And it was his first special on Netflix. And I said he reinvented the, the form. With his physicality, his rhythm, everything. So I would put him yeah, right up there with anybody as yeah, a stand-up. I, I asked Chris Rock because I said, did you see him on this whatever? And he goes, this is a couple of weeks ago. And he goes, he, that first special came out and it really, you know, a lot of people, their first special is the one. Because it introduces you to a, such a wide audience. And then you do specials after that. But the first one, people. Well, go, there's, there's a little bit of a story behind that because... I was getting ready to do a special when that came out and I like to keep things kind of not super locked up, like a, just a head moving across a giant 60 inch Panavision. Mm. So I love the way his first one was shot because he's very physical. He's running around. He's wide. He's using the mic and tying up like a horse with the chair and all this Panama, <laughs> yeah, you know? Yeah. And I go, and I said to the Netflix guy, man, I love the way Cat Williams special. He goes, well, we didn't do it. We weren't too happy with it, but we put it on anyway. He did it off label. Maybe paid for it himself. Oh, yeah, but yeah, a lot of comics do it themselves and they sell yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. It's probably the way to go though if you did it right. Yeah. That's inside baseball right there. Well, then they all don't look the same. That's good, you know. You, you like that idea too, I think. Um Well, I don't uh, like too much cuts. I don't want to be in a uh an imaginary chair in a theater that mm -hmm. flies. So you're watching a guy like waist up, all of a sudden he's tiny. Then you're coming in the chair whoo, right into his face, you know, like yeah. all these cuts every second. I like to hold for a little minute. Yeah, I'll, yeah. I'll I direct like your next special. I think I'm doing one this year. Yeah. I think but you're directing. Doing one too. I'm going to direct yeah. it. Also, they also, I like in <laughs> movies like Tarantino, they just hold on a two shot with people talking and never cut in. Just let's, let's listen to them talk. I get it. Woody the Allen, actors, kind of, a, yeah. it get, they call it the moving master, where the camera's like just it. moving, it's a three shot, it's a two shot, yeah. and so you're not editorializing. For drama, you go smash cut, the monster yeah. just came. But Cheap. for a comedian, if you go smash cut to their face, here comes the funny. Yeah. You know, there's a reason the cowboy shot, David, explain to the audience what the cowboy shot is. I think the is. cowboy shot is waist up. Is if you had pistols on, they'd be sort of mid upper thigh, so that's what Johnny Carson, you know, Jack Parr started with this. Jimmy Fallon does it now. It's basically the one person who had it better than most was Letterman. Do you want to know um, why? Yeah, why? Because Letterman had the, the camera was actually on the stage with him and he could walk into a close up. So Letterman could be back. If he needed and, it. And people do it. I think Fallon does it. But that's very effective yeah. that he's moving closer to you going, that's what I'm thinking. Then he moves back. For people watching yeah. this on YouTube, it's like, hey, you know what I mean? And then back here. Yeah, I like that. Mm -hmm. I like that. I like uh, to teach. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> also, the roast was recently. Yes, within and the last few days. It's, it's reverberating all over the world. Yeah, I think I was... I think Kat did a live special on Netflix the night before the roast, which I saw some of that interesting. Mm -hmm. And then they did it. They're, they're moving they into more live going on. They are things going on that I got to tell you all you about. You don't want to know about. I was no. just, what I was watching and what Chappelle always said, if you can't be funny, make sure your topics are really interesting. So Kat always goes into some global whatever motif. So you're instantly going, what is he going to say? Things are happening that you don't know about on planet Earth. You know, it's really interesting. You know, what's funny is, you know, my neck, <laughs> my neck gives me trouble. We're golfing. So I'm starting to puss out toward the end, but I don't quit. I just say, I, I don't think I'm going to drive since we got powerhouse Blake cracking them. You're not a quitter. I'll just say. Not it. a quitter. Because he goes, <laughs> we need you. So I said, okay. So we get up there. And uh, I don't take a drive. I don't take a drive. And then the next one, uh, it's a par three. And he goes, I think you can hit the green from me. So I crack <laughs> one about two feet from the green. And he goes, 
And I go, oh, yeah. And he goes, this guy was in a hostel last hole. And now he's jumping around like he's King Kong. <laughs> it's what? so true. I was in a hostel because my neck hurt. And I was like, I don't know. Have, have you ever golfed with Bill Burr? Because his persona on stage would what? be like, you know. Why do we have golf teeth? Yeah. You brought your head up. You brought your head up. Every time. <laughs> you got to keep your head you. down. I will tell you. I saw Bill. He comes in late. <laughs> What's going on? Are we going? What are we doing? We all go at the same time? And he's got his shirt untucked and he's got like drawstring sweats slash pajamas. And I go, oh, I think because it's Riviera, you got to you got to tuck in. He goes, tuck in what? I go, tuck in your shirt. I don't care if you do. I, I, oh, fuck, do we? What is this shit? There is a movement. In, and it's got his drawstring out. I go, I don't think they want that either. I go, no. I got called in. I had to go buy shorts one time or pants because... They, I had black sweats. I was cheating. And they go, mm -mm, don't try to pull sweats it's, on us. It's with a cart. It's $1,200 for nine holes to play there. And you oh, got a guy place, in yeah. jaws, pants, and a tank yeah. top holding a Bud Light with just one club. Let's do this. You know, yeah. it's and like people, Happy Madison cannot play. Exactly. Riverside. People live on the course. And I always go, uh, you don't want to live on that first hole because 6 a.m. you're getting your coffee and you hear some guy shank it and go, Cunt. You're like, mm. oh, I know. Morning. I once had an apartment and uh, I looked over the first uh, hole where they would tee off and I'd open the screen door. It was, it was in Hancock Park. And I could <laughs> yeah, look out. Like and Park. in the morning, I'd be having coffee and I'd just hear, fuck. God yeah, exactly. damn it. That's all I heard over and over again. Shank, bitch. Yeah. yeah um, uh, okay, we'll talk about the roast quickly and then we'll get into topics, you know. But the, the roast, roast was very good. You liked it, didn't you? Well, just to get into it from a different angle, like the they've been having these for about 60, 70 years. I am assume yeah. they had them in vaudeville. It's a very interesting psychosocial. When it you really would watch the Dean Martin roast for you people over 70, yep. it was it was cute compared to this. Now Love them. it is you can't help but it's a reality show that's so intense. I mean, it was, there were moments that were amazing. And you yeah. always wonder, the only question I'd have for Tom Brady, it's been a few days later, are you glad you did it mm -hmm. or wish you hadn't done it or have no opinion? Right. My question, Tom, is it's not, it can't be the money. Someone's going to say they threw a lot of money at him. It can't be the money because he's got too much. He'll never spend it. He'll never get to the end of it. So. I think I, Tom I have Brady a theory, but I want to hear your theory. Oh, my no. theory is. It, first of all, it's fun. It's like authentic. You get to see behind the scenes. You never see Tom Brady say fuck. You never get to see him with his helmet off for more than 10 minutes. Like that was yeah. fun for me. Uh, mm -hmm. Great looking chiseled um, and sitting there and taking a fucking beating. And from some people he didn't know. And that's the hard part for me. If I, I wouldn't do that part, I wouldn't get roasted. And even if I did, even if it was people I knew, you don't want to get, if people go too deep, they can't help it. Well, yeah, you know, it's all, it's, it's, it's one or two things. Either you're getting roasted and you don't have kids that are young teens, or mm -hmm. you're getting roasted and you have kids that are young teens. So it's, they might as well be sitting next to you on stage because it's just going to blast out. So, you know, marriage and all that. The right. only thing I can think if, if Tom Brady at night ever checks comments from freaks, that would be a version of that show going at him at all these angles because he's really good looking. He's worth a billion dollars and he's the greatest athlete of all time. So he invites jealous hatred. These comedians just want to come up with the best joke. You can tell that no one, they all love him, yeah. but like the game of like what Kevin Hart came out with laying the ground rules. Nikki Glaser came in strong. I mean, there were a lot of a lot of great jokes and hard to land in that audience. So, and it, it, you want it to be concise. You want to do something no one else is doing. You don't want to overlap. Um, we'll get into that because we have Nikki on fly on the wall. But you know the fact that you, I've done a roast and I've actually done one. And when you're, I was the host, sort of like Kevin. Yeah, they've they've gotten rougher over the years. You thought they were rough, but well, it wasn't just me, right? It's getting no, no. One of the overarching points is I thought a theme was non PC is back. I mean that that crowd was a lot of people, and it was a great crowd, which is very hard to get. Almost everyone did well, 
and you can't sweeten it. It's live. In, in a long show, because you're following yeah, people that hours, have de- yeah. have destroyed, yeah. just killed, and then you're coming out, and a lot of there has to be some overlap. It's going to be about the jiu-jitsu guy with the wife, mm-hmm. and it's going to be uh, that he, maybe he's gay or whatever it is. It's yeah. it's no holds barred. But that was uh, completely unwoke. <laughs> unwoke was, for sure. It was crazy, mm-hmm. and everyone was going along with it. And there were some jokes that were crazy. Um, I thought Tony Hinchcliffe, who does Kill Tony, the thing I told you I did about a couple of weeks ago was was he did a really good job because you know no pressure he comes out of the audience you notice that they don't really know who he is he isn't a household name he does something with Dana then he just walks up with the mic and he starts talking and you're like what is he doing and then he says something about Jeff they, then there are people like oh this is kind of funny. Then wham, wham, wham. Then he's like Rodney King, Liver King. Remember that run? Yeah, that was a great one. That was uh, a great one. Great, Heather's great, a, great, one. great jokes. And you're right; it does soften it a little bit when you're coming out of the audience. Who is this guy? Rather than you know just yeah, low over. expectations. Or they're sitting up there. I mean, I think I saw Nick. She she kind of did a big sigh on one of the wide shots before she came out because the. You know, it's all these celebrities. You're seeing Trust Kevin Hart kill, and it's going on and on, and Jeff Ross. And then, you know, it's a little nerve wracking. Dude, you know, honestly, I think when I did the roast, you're supposed to do seven minutes and, or six minutes, and everyone yeah. last night did 15. I mean, mm-hmm. it went forever. Uh, we'll mm-hmm. get into that with Nikki. So you have to switch over. By the way, I ran into Drew Bledsoe today, and okay. I was like, you must be. I, I, I said he did a good job because for someone who they don't really know, for a casual viewer, Drew Bledsoe goes integral in the story of Tom Brady. And I think it got explained, but um, oh, definitely you're, yeah. you're going there to be like, I don't know, to show up there is hard. But you're mixing professional athletes with professional comedians. It's not a fair fight. Just like comedians get their ass kicked on the football field. Yeah, but they're, he said, <laughs> he even know. said, we, he goes, the athletes, I think, did better than the uh, comedians would do playing football. And I said, oh, okay, 100%. there you go. Yeah. So I thought he handled himself great. He I'm did. I thought he's cool. It probably was 10 feet tall. I walked up and I was like, he goes, how are you? Drew blood. So I go, oh shit, you were just on the roast, dude. Uh, oh, he's not one of those pipsqueak quarterbacks. He's an actual six, four. <laughs> Some of them are a little smaller. They're really, yeah, uh, five, nine and a half, one sixty, running it out of the pocket. Yeah. Kyler you know? Murray plays for my Cardinals and he's four, one. Anyway, um, <laughs> hey, David, can I ask you a question? Go right ahead. Um, why do you want to learn a new language? Where mm. would you use it and how would it come in handy? Well, I think I have to eventually go to France or go to one of these places and uh, be a world traveler get a crowbar on my wallet mm-hmm. and spend some money. But, you know, mm-hmm. I don't, I'm a little nervous about going without knowing a language. And that's where Rosetta Stone would come in in that scenario because yes, I, that's probably the best way to get in there, learn something, get the basics and uh, more than the basics if you want. But this is the place for sure. Rosetta Stone is the most trusted language learning program available on desktop or it's an app. Yeah. And it immerses, you know that word, David? immerses I've you heard of it. Yeah. in the language you want to learn. So it's not just like, hey, here's the language, repeat after me. It's like, it makes you think in the language. It makes you talk in it. It gives you the actual local dialect so you don't you know, sound like a stiff guy. Speech recognition, yes. built-in true accent feature. Mm-hmm. Pronunciate the words. Truly. Pronunciate. It's like having a personal trainer for your accent. <laughs> By the way, 25 languages. So, you know, you got your Spanishes, you got your Frenches, mm-hmm. yeah. you got your Italians. Yeah. And I mean, all over the globe, that's not, doesn't stop there. No, no, you can, you will never get, go to a country where Rosetta Stone. You're not going to trip them up. No, no. Nope, 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 nope. That's lifetime access to 25 language courses Rosetta Stone offers for 50% Whoa, off. Whoa. That's, that's a steal, that I'm going to say. crazy, it. yeah. Mm-hmm. Don't put off learning that language. There's no better time than right now to get started for a very limited time. Superfly listeners can get Rosetta Stone's lifetime membership mm. for that 50% off. Visit rosettastone.com slash superfly. That's 50% off unlimited accent to 25 language courses for the rest of your life. Hmm. 
Yeah, I'm just going to say it. Redeem your 50% off at rosettastone.com slash superfly today. Oh, I just uh, noticed today that Bernie Sanders announced at 82 that he's running for the United States Senate again. No, he's not, is he? Yeah. What is he right now? Anything? He's a senator. He's just running for re-election. No, he's running again. From Vermont. But it shows you the difference because when I do Biden, I go a little more softer. Yeah, it's Joe Biden. What's ever doing? Yeah, he's fading well, out. Well, when I do Bernie, I'm a... The billionaires and the millionaires are taking all the money. So you can see how well he's aging, (laughs) that he still screams. I think he's learning to sound like you're not old. So he leans into it and goes louder. Biden fades out. Biden kind of fades out and says that. I was thinking of Flight of Fancy because Obama and Clinton are running around doing things. And just, just the idea of how do they talk about Biden amongst themselves when they're alone? You know? Yeah, Joe's, uh, you know. Joe's Joe's good. I mean, Joe's good. Joe's good. Yeah, of course he's good. Why would you? Why would you even bring that up? Joe, I'm just saying he's good. That's all. I'm just saying he's good. Well, of course he is. Everyone knows he's good, right? I mean, he is good, right? I just good. said he's good. He's very, very good. <laughs> I mean, it's not a problem. Okay. All right. All right. Whatever. We're in agreement. Okay. He's good. <laughs> and nobody, cut. <laughs> no, nobody cracks. So they go. But I mean, with the border, exactly. <laughs> they jump in. One guy gives a little bit, and the other right. one goes, "Well, yeah, the border. We should talk." Well, about I mean, sometimes, I mean, sometimes when you know he's maybe not the most articulate, you know, kind of. <laughs> I mean, he, he's not quite sure what he's saying sometimes. So that's all right. That's I, I know. I know. He sits down, and he just sits down. And he looks off, and he itches his nose. And I, I tell him it's not a good look, and he goes very slow. Well, sometimes <laughs> I got to yell at the TV. Uh-oh, here comes Bernie. <laughs> Don't proceed. Don't proceed. I'm ready on day one to be president of the United States. That's um, a good Bernie. Well, that's a lot of power. All right. Well, we'll, now, we'll Doesn't get... that make you tired? I'd be, I'd be tired if I was Bernie. Uh, I'm never tired because the <laughs> millionaires, you know, the funny thing, this is now Frank had told me this. He would do the millionaires and the billionaires. We got to tax him. And then his accountant told him because his book sold. Well, he's actually a millionaire. Yeah. So he dropped millionaires. It's yeah. the billionaires. It's like a witch hunt. They're the ones we got to get. Yeah. It's also, we don't need any cops and they all have security. It's like, well, if you have 24 hour security, sure. You don't need anything, but normal yeah. people might need. They're cops. all guarded by a small army. We should defund <laughs> the police. Excuse me. Get that Uzi out of my face, but keep it nearby. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> but don't defund security because I have a security team. <laughs> yes. And so, yeah. you know, there's all that political stuff going on. We'd like to stir the pot a little bit. Yeah, make, we're fucking make, edgy. We are edgy doing the stuff that uh, going places where other people. Oh, our, our mayor go. in L.A., uh, you know, because there's crime here and everyone mm-hmm. is running scared. But then she got robbed. They broke into her house and robbed. And so now <laughs> she's like, fuck this noise. <laughs> and sometimes it takes that. I don't want anything bad to happen to anyone. But sometimes it's like, oh, it even happens. So then they get a wake-up call and go, oh, boy. Well, the mayor of San Francisco, I said, who knew that defund the police wouldn't work? <laughs> so they're mm-hmm. funding it again. Oh, they said that. Yeah. yeah. I, I'm all for just peace and harmony in neighborhoods. Yeah, I, I, I like my... Goal for my government, you know, the United States government, mm. is to protect me from foreign adversaries, protect the country, mm. and then protect me in my neighborhood. Those are my one and two values. Yours is yours is to dodge taxes, I think mm-hmm. you said the other night. Yeah. I said, <laughs> why are you hassling Wesley Snipes? Because he didn't pay $7 million in tax. <laughs> That's a little bit of an accountant, right? Or someone... <laughs> I know some people, I don't know if anyone can thinks they get away with it, but it's, it's a tough one. You gotta, you you can fudge and, and, you know, do your best within the laws, but man, you do not want to get caught and go to jail for that. If you talk to a tax guy and you just go, well, is that a write-off? They go, could be. Well, is it, or isn't it? Don't know. Depends. Why don't we just take it? See what they say. We'll find out when you get audited. It's like interpreting the Bible or something like, yeah, I think so. And then you get audited and they go, you're on your own. Yeah. they, They audit Bernie. You're liars and you cheats. I pay more than my fair share. I'm Bernie Sanders. That's him okay. talking to his wife. Also, someone write in the comments on YouTube whether IRS agents can carry a gun. I heard that someone told me the other day, and I said they cannot. 
Okay, uh, Dana, I'm not going to tell you the Golden Bachelor broke up with his wife after three months because I don't think you're ready for that news. And you had so such high hopes for them. I did. But when all the dust settles and all, all right. the cameras what go do down got? and what every we... night isn't a helicopter yeah. date and they have to go to Chili's and it's the grind, he's like, fuck, I'm out. It was that fast. Like, come on, dude. It's not all going to be confetti in the air, but. He's like um, Vegas dealer tapping. Yeah. Oh. Uh, I'm just sad. I, that's my statement on that. Right. I'm sad, I'm sad is... they, were, they were a cute couple and I'm sorry that they broke up because I think they could have d- started a family. <laughs> and I, yeah. And I hope he doesn't date again immediately because he apparently isn't ready. Okay. Uh, I didn't right. want to tell you this news. Everyone said, do not tell Dana. Everyone said it. <laughs> Uh, okay, right. this first like little that. clip. Look at this. If Wayne and Garth conceived a child, it would be Skrillex, who's a DJ. That's kind of funny. That's not bad. It's not a video, but it was like, Sha. Sha. It's frighteningly. It's okay. Wait a minute. It's yeah, frighteningly like accurate. He does look a lot like a Swain. Wayne. <laughs> Cha. It does, Garth. Chill. <laughs> I'm looking at the Garth while you talk. It's pretty funny. This is very strange. I feel funny like when I used to climb the rope in gym class. And it rubbed your wiener? Yeah. It, you never say what it does. <laughs> oh, you just get, you leave it open. You just say that. Mm. Cha, right. Yeah, he looks kind of like me, but he's better looking because I'm Garth and I'm humble. <laughs> Wayne and Garth had a kid. Funny. What does that guy do? Is he a singer? He's a DJ, dude. Wake up. I'm an old guy. I don't know all the young people reference. A I DJ? Don't like, no. like Casey Kasem? A DJ? Mm. We all had a little record player. Did that make us a DJ? Look, <laughs> oh, look I at dropped me. a needle. Now give me a million dollars. Beep. Take me to a visa. I don't like, like it. Bluetooth. We had okay. blue teeth. <laughs> <laughs> all right go ahead okay no edits all right don't hit it yet wait 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 i don't know what this is about oh yeah this is kind of funny this is just watch it play out this is the mom giving the guy be safe driving we all do this all right okay play i'm sure it'll stop right, here we go it. love you love you we'll talk more all right drive safe yeah child for idiots parents are always worried if you ride because there's a lot of dumb drivers out there and well true she definitely wasn't wrong yeah look at after she just told him. And here's the surprise ending. I'm so sorry. Oh my God. Oh my God, Jacob. Fuck me. Fuck mom. This is mom. Fuck. Oh, it's his mom? His mom hit him God accidentally. Damn it, mom. God damn it, mom. I didn't, I didn't even get out of the way. I didn't even see you. Oh my God. Oh. Isn't that funny? Ah, oh, man. That happened too many times in my childhood to laugh at. <laughs> Your mom would run you over? Mom, no. <laughs> my mom was too nervous to drive on the freeway. You know, so. Oh, when, you're, when you were a kid? That's or call funny. long distance. She just had anxiety. <laughs> <laughs> Why? <laughs> yeah, you know, people are people. They didn't, have, they didn't have antidepressants. They said, here's a glass of water and do some push-up and get out of my face. Rough it. <laughs> my dad used to say, I go, Dad, I got a headache. I've been working for eight hours. I just want to lay down before dinner for a second. Uh, rough day, Davey. You going to make <laughs> it? Why don't you lay down? Take a little powder. Yeah. You got <laughs> tough, don't you? I go, yeah, I do. Asshole. He goes, hey. Oh, yeah. I always that thinking was... I was like a puss. I'm like, I am a puss, but. Well, it was a different time. You know, parents were laissez-faire. You didn't really see your parents much. You didn't hang out with your parents. You didn't have a phone to call your parents every second. That's true. I had a phone. uh, I know he didn't give us his phone number. I never knew that growing up. Like, that was his scam. He would, we'd wait for incoming calls. Even though he lived a mile away, we didn't know where he was. Ah, that's, we, we need to do a whole super yeah, fly just on crying. that, David. <laughs> I'll start crying. Okay. The next dumb joke. Oh, this is funny. Okay. I thought you'd laugh at this. this oh, is okay. Arnold, no, need... Arnold as a, I think it's a motorcycle. Okay, here we go. <laughs> this is the race. Go. <laughs> 
Those are the different bikes. Losers. I like this. <laughs> Someone's doing that. <laughs> I see. So they stop. <laughs> oh, when they go over the whoop de yeah. I got it. There's different ones doing it. <laughs> oh, okay, there's two or three guys. He's like, fucking idiots. And they're like, I think we got it on that one. I think we got it. Now we have a viral video. Yeah. And they'll never know nothing. it. It's me and the thing about here and there and the people and I go over the thing and I go. Rah, 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 rah. I think the angle oh, we God. did work that it's going to go worldwide. Worldwide. Let me tell you worldwide. something. Worldwide. I love one thing I love about Arnold. He always, he still always says, let me tell you something before let he tells you something. you something. Let me tell you something. You got to do push-ups if you want to get stronger. Let me tell you something. You've got to eat protein if you want to build the muscles. Let me tell you something. Why do you have to say, let me, we, just say it. I like, what, no, about when you go, what about when you said, hey, Seinfeld, let me ask you a question. He goes, quit saying, can I ask you a question? I know. I know. That was great. I, want, I wanted to frame it, so I wasn't interrupting. But don't, don't say you're going to ask me a question. Then he, he said he had a bit about it. He was yeah, working he on a saying, bit. One thing I have to say that really made me laugh, I don't know if he, that every review... Which he got some good ones, and and any comedy gets people getting I'm unfrosted, you know, shit, shitting on every comedy His movie about pop. Every tarts, review yeah. had just sort of pastry references. <laughs> this pop tart could be a bit sweeter, but again, <laughs> this cake doesn't get baked. I mean, every single <laughs> review was referring to dessert treats from the 1960s. This cereal got soggy. This these corn flakes need a little more milk. And this unfrosted could have used more frosting. Hi, th I'm Bill Fleekflock for Time Magazine. <laughs> Tony the Tiger got hit with a tranquilizer gun. <laughs> I, don't know. I wish this tart was sweeter, but in the end of the day, it leaves you wanting to eat something else. Hi, I write for Newsweek. And I, went, I went to Harvard. Yeah, I went to Harvard. <laughs> I'm reviewing this piece of shit. They go, hi. I asked Tony the Tiger what he thought of this movie, and he said, it's okay. It's spotty. It's choppy. Uh, it starts out of the gate. A lot of jokes. And you're like, Tony the Tiger's talking more than he, he used to. I know. He used Tony to just say it's great. That was an old Hollywood Minute joke. I said, I asked Tony the Tiger what he thought of this movie, and he said, it's good at times, but it's a bit, teensy bit long. But I'd to... still go. I'd go again. It's... Great. No, he's good. Oh, yeah, it's, it's pretty good. good. Time. Mm. It's so so. That's, no, I thought Unfrosted was good, and I was. It glad is. That it's we, a. It's 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 a really. If you funny haven't movie. heard us with Seinfeld, we did a interview with him, and it's over on Fly on the Wall. Check Fly your the local wall. listing. You really, can find it. really fun. But he said, which is very Jerry, and he'll say in the thing, I can't wait to read bad reviews. It's very Jerry. <laughs> Like he was looking forward to it, which is the really? best way to, because it, it's a silly comedy. You know, I mean, what are you going to say? You either like it or you don't. I mean, it's only, they used to review Sandler movies like Adam Sandler tried to make Apocalypse Now, but he ended up with Grown Ups. You know, yeah. what would they think his goal was? Unfrosted <laughs> is not, it, there's not one serious line in the movie. It's like, Unfrosted oh, is no Godfather, Associated yeah. Press. You know? <laughs> AP Wire. <laughs> It's no aliens. Mine were like, if they had a good review, it'd be like, this movie really is a surprise. Like, it wasn't even really that great a review. And then at the bottom, it would say like, Gern Blanston from the Daily Squeep Squab. You're like, the penny saver? What is it? Anything we've heard of? No. Nope. I want to do a short film. So some movie actor is just being driven crazy by these reviews he's getting by this guy. So he meets him in a restaurant. He's just super angry at him. Mm -hmm. He sits down. He goes, yeah, I just don't like your reviews are mean, man. The guy goes, well, I don't know. I just like to write them the way I write them. <laughs> <laughs> so then the guy goes, that's okay. I'm going to leave now. And I understand. Yeah, <laughs> that's, that's kind of what it is.
Warmer, sunnier days are calling, Dana. Fuel up. Yes. With factors, no prep, no mess meals. Meet your wellness goals in time for summer thanks to the menu of chef-crafted meals with options like Calorie Smart, Mm -hmm. Protein Plus, and Keto. Factors fresh, never frozen meals are dietitian approved and ready to eat in mm-hmm. just two minutes. So no matter how busy you are, you'll always have time to enjoy nutritious, great tasting mm-hmm. meals. That's Ooh. right. That's right. They have, David, by the way, 35 different meals and more than 60 add-ons to choose from every week. So you'll always have new flavors to explore. That sounds crazy. Yeah. Crush your wellness goals this May with dietitian approved meals and ingredients that you can trust. Make your day delicious from breakfast to dessert. Stay fueled up with easy, nutritious options. Treat yourself to restaurant quality meals that feature premium ingredients like filet mignon, my favorite, shrimp, blackened salmon. Mm, mm, mm. Keep, keep kitchen time to a minimum. Factor <laughs> meals are ready in two minutes. Wow. Yeah. No shopping, no prepping, no cooking, no cleanup. Effortless support for your lifestyle. Choose from six menu preferences to help you manage calories, maximize protein intake, avoid meat, or simply eat well-balanced, David. What you got to do is head to factormeals.com slash superfly50 and use code superfly50 to get 50% off your first box plus 20% off your next month. Whoa. That's code superfly50 at factormeals.com slash superfly50. Mm-hmm. You get 50% off your first box plus 20% off your next one wow. while your subscription is active. All right, load them up. Hang on, don't place, don't do it yet. Let me see let if me, I can set let me it switch up. switch on. Okay, set this up because I have no idea what this is. I don't even know what this is. I send them. Okay. Them. Okay, let's just play it. That employee framed his boss, but how he did it should honestly terrify everyone. Dazon Darian was an oh, yeah, athletic director at a Baltimore high school who wasn't getting along with the principal and wanted to take him down. So he released some audio of the principal going on a racist rant. Here's just a small clip of that. Ungrateful black kids who can't test their way out of a paper bag. This audio was sent to media outlets and posted on social media this and it spread very like interesting. wildfire. The principal started getting doxxed, was receiving death threats, and was put on leave, losing his job. The principal denied it all, but there's audio evidence, so it's pretty mm. hard to deny, right? Mm. Well, mm. it turns out this was all right. AI generated by the athletic director Scary. who just needed a few Whoa. seconds of the principal's real voice to have artificial intelligence clone it and generate a fake racist rant. That's it. Wow. Oh, man. The future AI. is here. AI. I'm going to go grab the real Dana because I feel bad about this. Oh. Hold on. I'll be right back. It's more like AI auto. Hey, what happened? Did we wait, did we start? Biden. Did we start yet? Biden? Oh, hi, Dan. Yeah. Is that the real I mean, one? Biden. No, I just got in. I had technical issues. What happened? Oh. With, well, we were just talking to someone that we with thought who? was you. There was no, a Dana guy. It's scary. Um, I'm still doing it. There was a Dana. No, there's, did you hear Dana. when I said more like AI auto? <laughs> <laughs> Do you know that I had a catchphrase on set? I tried to make a catchphrase the first season. It was like a gangster guy. And it was like kind of a gangster guy. And it was like, well, I ought to pound you. Well, I ought to pound you. That sounds familiar. Maybe you were saying it because I didn't. I maybe did it twice. I did it on the Steve Gutenberg show. And Lauren's like. Oh, you did it. And Lauren was into it. It was a sketch. Um, I think it could be could be a national catchphrase. It could be. A Why t-shirt. I ought to pound you? I like you kind of come down. I ought to pound. I ought to pound you. I must have seen it in some 1948 movie starring John Lovitz when he was a fetus. <laughs> you know what's funny is seeing Chloe, uh, mm-hmm. Fine, Feynman. Uh, oh, she's hers hasn't aired yet. We just interviewed Chloe, and she's on flying along. From it. Saturday Night Live, Chloe Feynman. Yeah, on. and then she said Dua Lipa was coming on, and so we were talking about what the promos were going to be. She had to think of an impression, and then like the next day I saw her with Dua Lipa. They were doing the promo, and she had to do an impression of it. So it was Well, cool. all you do is just say, if you can't do the impression, I've said this before, always say the name of the person you're doing. I'm Dua Lipa. Oh, I'm Hi. Dua Lipa. I'm Dua Lipa. And then you're halfway there, yeah. but just say the name. Funny you'll wig. Be, you'll be free. No, the AI thing, the future's arriving, and uh, it's kind of scary. Although, if they get the digital down, we can make a, brown, a brand new Wayne's World 3 that looks exactly like Mike and I Ooh. in our get-ups circa 1948. <laughs> it turns out it looks like claymation. You're like, no, eh, it's not good enough. Yeah, 
AI. It looks like the yeah. California raisins. AI yeah, fucked yeah. us. <laughs> uh, okay, yeah, fuck AI. I'm pissed at it. That's my stance. Okay, this one is. I'm still. She's Louise. Game. We got a lot. I don't of... even know what I'm showing. Is this funny? That's good. You... You think I'm ugly? I don't care. You think I'm dumb? Can I, I don't send care. this? You think I'm scum? I don't care. Bitch, I make my money. Oh, you can stop it. I think I was saying how how bad music is. Well, first of all, it was compelling. Uh, second, it had a good beat. Was there I actually, something else going on there? I can't remember. It drew me in. I don't uh, even know what I was thinking when I sent that one. I, I got, think I thought it was so stupid, but there's worse, and we all agree. There are worse dumb songs. But don't pull it up. It's too hard. We'll do it next week. So we'll pull up a dumber one. We're if looking this at bit isn't we're looking cut. at way too much stuff. Man. I know. Do you ever have your phone scold you? You were down last week. You only spent seven hours a day on the phone looking at I things. know. When I see that, I go shame on it you. It says, Oh, you've been on the phone twenty three hours a day. I'm like, we gotta pump them numbers up. Well, I've got an exercise ring. Well, you didn't so, do so good today, but there's always tomorrow. <laughs> what the oh, fuck? Yeah. Just because I don't have my ring? phone in my pocket, I walk nine miles, bitch. <laughs> People, I say, I put my phone down, then I ran for like two hours. Yeah, I left my phone in the car, and then I get scolded at night, right as I'm trying to fall into magnificent REM slumber, and I got some voice scolding me. Yeah, All right. and then I we get still got a girl through, walking. and then I oh, and then I leave you voice text. Yeah, did you work out today? <laughs> oh yeah. What, what are these two beauties? Workout. I don't know if this is even anything. We'll cut it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Dana, David, is hey, we are your biggest fans. My name is James. It's my dad, Troy. Hi. Oh, it's a, a question. question for you. Absolutely. Take it away. What is your favorite pickup line? What's your favorite line? We'd like to know. We need to know. Thank you. I love you guys. <laughs> oh. Ah, uh, Dana, you haven't done these for a while. I'll steal um, Nicholas Cage because when I did the movie Trapped in Paradise with him, and he saw an attractive young woman they liked. He'd say, if I were to send you flowers, where would I send them? Oh, that's not bad. That was a pretty good one. Yeah. Yeah. My buddy in high school used to say, this face is leaving in five minutes. Be on it. I would say. Be on it. It's more than one line. Most comedians. Didn't work. You're right. If you can make a woman laugh, like, you know, I think that's the key. So what would you know, be your opening line? Well, I'm David Spade. I'm rich and famous and really, really smart. No, you say, <laughs> hi, I'm Dana Carvey. Uh, no, you go like this. I'm sorry. Are you in Are you in uh, 31 movies and five TV shows? Oh, wait, that's me. How are you? I'm Dana. I would say the most attractive line you can say, which happened to me back in, back in the day in the clubs. Mm-hmm. So I'm waiting to go on stage. It's packed, 250 people. And then a young woman would come up and start talking to me. And I, I, the, my pickup line was, I got to go. <laughs> and I got to go on stage, stand oh, on a good. platform, and pretend to be confident for an hour. <laughs> no, that's uh, a good trick. But seriously, greatest pickup line. Well, first of all, what's a, what's a bad one? No, here's a funny mm. one that my friend said that he was standing with Kevin Nealon at this hotel checking in. Nealon's got some great lines. <laughs> and he said... uh and these two girls walk by, and Kevin goes, oh, my God, we were just talking about you two. Isn't that funny? Yeah. Just two strangers. Kevin and has go, so many what? dry one-liners. I'd say just, it's like, um, do you find me attractive? <laughs> <laughs> no, that's, that's me with my wife. <laughs> oh. What's yours? Oh, no. Ask no. Heather what's her favorite line from a guy. What oh, yeah. It? Heather, have you had a good one from a guy before we wrap this thing up? Most of my DMs just go, hey. No, most of her DMs just go, hey. <laughs> you got to give something else. Give a curveball. Even if you throw, like, you know, a, a, you know, a goddamn ferret. You could be, you could do anything. Put a mirror. Uh, maybe like self-deprecating. Hey, uh, I'm really bad at pickup lines. So what I'm saying right now is my pickup line that I'm not good at pickup lines. No, 
I think if it's a DM, <laughs> if you literally put anything, they know you're hitting on them. So it's not like you need a whole soliloquy. So no one sidles up in a bar anymore? You are beautiful. Fire emoji. Fire emoji. Uh, can I buy you a cocktail? How about a glass of Chardonnay? No, I know girls that say guys just do not know them. Just go, you want to go to Paris this weekend. And then I'm like, oh, that's good. Well, you were actually gone last hmm. weekend. They're like, yeah, I went to Paris. I go, hmm. Hmm. stranger? Yeah. I just don't want men to be judged by the size of their wallet. Oh, yeah. What is that from? That's from... That was Martin Sheen to Charlie Sheen. Oh, yeah, Wall Street. And the Michael Douglas, Wall Street. And he hit wallet so hard. I think we built a whole sketch on it. That's People funny. just hitting one word, really. Yeah. You know, listen, I'm sorry, but I don't have any pickup lines. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, that's pretty good. You did that pretty good. <laughs> don't right, proceed. What? Don't proceed. Okay, we learned a lot today. We learned about the roast, we learned about mm -hmm. my golfing experience today. Um, and we went over some stuff. I think we really mm -hmm. hit a home run. I yes. feel like it's I, 10 out of I 10. traded from the sunglasses to the regular readers 13 times throughout mm -hmm. the podcast. That was a record. Oh, yeah. And uh, we appreciate everyone <laughs> tuning in. We love you watching the uh, YouTube and leaving comments, and we read them. Mm -hmm. And um, we hear you and we feel you. Come see me on the road, davidspade.com coming to what's the, the next city. town give me a date i town. think i'm Don't coming to las vegas at the old venetian mm -hmm. with nikki glazer and then um mm -hmm. that's in say it again oh yeah atlanta and savannah and a couple others back east so how many and times do you go back to a city and play i it? keep going i keep going Is like this I'm your doing ninth atlanta visit north <laughs> carolina i'm doing Asheville. i'm doing all these there one in kentucky it's going to be really like beep boop pop boop beep pop beep one question i want you to do this on your next gig mm -hmm. out there just sure. to, because it'll make you laugh it'll make me laugh knowing you're yeah. going to do it you come out yeah. and you go if it's atlanta what's up atlanta that's it that's your first line I do it anyway. You do every that. every city I say, "What's up, Atlanta?" <laughs> but like that, <laughs> proclaiming it, like, "What's up, Atlanta?" What's up, Atlanta? Like, like this. All right, then, dudes, are you ready to party? Yeah. Are you ready <laughs> to party? No, I talk. About, <laughs> I talk about the eclipse for a half hour for some reason. But I had good shows this weekend. It was a blast in Florida. So, mm -hmm. big theaters. Theaters were real. I like when it's a really nice theater. And they've got this buffoon in there. You know, they did it for like some Tchaikovsky or something. Meanwhile, I'm like this. Mm -hmm. doo -doo 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 -doo. Well, sometimes, you know, the sound can be bad, good or really good. Mm -hmm. If you get out there with a mic and it's the right balance between the yeah. monitors and you, and you know you can do this and then hit a line like, what's up? And go back. Mm -hmm. And you know that it's filling the theater perfectly. It yeah. really helps. I played at a casino help. last year and it just, I thought, wow. Well. But I went out. And the sound was just fantastic. Yeah. You know, Sometimes so. you get there and it's four card tables taped together and you're like, oh, this is this is going to be a rough one. But <laughs> we do it. We love it. Eh, yeah, we want lucky. some more of it. All right. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Dana. Thanks. Thanks for joining me, David. We'll uh, hold on next... just a second. We could... oh, what is he doing? What is this guy doing? Hi, I'm Dana's digital copy. And oh, I'm you're going to say bye? I'm saying goodbye on behalf of Dana. Okay. Bye-bye, Dana. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. This has been a presentation of Odyssey. Superfly is executive produced by Dana Carvey and David Spade. Charlie Finan of Brillstein Entertainment. Jenna Weiss-Berman of Odyssey. Heather Santoro and Greg Holtzman. Hope you liked it. Mm-hmm.